Concerned you're not due back for two weeks yet. Good. <laughs> hey, I thought maybe you'd fly back on the China Clipper. Aha. I don't want nothing between me and the water except a good solid keel. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> same old house, huh? Yeah, it's the same from the outside, anyhow. See you tomorrow? You'll see me sooner than that. So long. Rick's home? Yes, sir. Are you expected? Expected? Why, the pink-toed prophet, it doesn't look that way. What stupid landlubber's idea are all these trick decorations? I should have come home a lot sooner, I can see that. Kathy, you old soul shaker. Oh, what a surprise. Though I must say you might have let us know. It throws the entire party out of balance. Party? But how I... Uh, not well at all, thank you. Quite ill, in fact. It's been such a task. The house was so undisciplined, I simply had to do the servants all over. Servants? Where's Maggie Brown? Maggie Brown? My cook. Oh, uh, why, uh, she resigned, uh, didn't she, Frankie? She couldn't take it. Far be it for me to hurt the wife of my late partner. But, Mrs. Peasley, for three years I've withheld any comment about my daughter's marriage to your son. But you remember this, you're his mother and not mine. Of course! <laughs> what a sense of humor! <laughs> Kathy, you've just time to dress. We'll manage to squeeze you into dinner somehow. Frankie, be a darling and help your father. Oh, dear! Take Mr. Rick's hat. And his coat. And his cigar. Clear the deck, you lily-livered swab. Now let's get to the bottom of this. You can't dig that deep before dinner, darling. There have been so many changes, it would be better if you took them in very small doses. I'll take nothing. Who allowed her on the bridge of the ship, anyways? Allowed? She dropped in for a weekend about a year ago. A year ago? Or does it just seem that long? Oh. <laughs> Who's coming to dinner? The bottom. Waldo P. Bottomley, the gadget peddler? Now, wait a minute, Dad. All that has to change. Have you met Waldo Jr.? No, and if he's anything like Senior, don't want to meet him. All right, if you want to go through life without speaking to your son-in-law. Son-in-law? Young Bottomley? What about you and Bill Peck? Don't mention that stubborn mule to me. Have you broken off with Bill? Months ago. He's too bossy. Almost as bad as you. Oh, you! Waldo P. Bottomley. For 20 years I've been keeping that old barnacle scraped off from a hull. Now he's got a grip on my stern. Say, am I seeing things or something? 
Not at all. That's an automatic door and it works with a photoelectric cell or whatever you call it. Oh, a bottomly product, huh? Well, I know one bottomly product that's not going to get into my family if I have anything to say about it. It's a fine homecoming. <laughs> Now, Cappy, with Frank and Junior about to be married, I propose that we bury the hatchet. That might not be so easy. Nonsense, nonsense. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble if you come around to my way of thinking. What? Well, tell them about the yacht there. You uh, must have read about it, Cappy. The paper's called it Bottomley's Dreamboat. Going in the yacht business, huh? No, no. Now, don't worry about any competition. It's just a little thing I got the youngsters for a wedding present, for a honeymoon trip. What kind? A schooner type, 75-footer. Just too cute for words. The latest thing, Kathy. All chromium finish. Wait till you see it, Kathy. It's wonderful. All you do is push a button and things happen. What about the crew? Well, that's just the point. There isn't any crew. Labor-saving devices by Bottomley Automatic Products Corporation. Progress, Kathy. Progress. No crew, huh? Just push buttons. Well, what happens if one of them gadgets gets out of whack, huh? Uh, things happen. Uh, Mrs. Peasley just told us. You're not going to see it on any floating switchboard. I will if I want to, and I want to. I'd like to see anyone try and stop me. Remember, Kathy, you came home for peace and quiet. Quiet. I'm telling you, my daughter's not going on that contraption. You don't know it, but times are passing you by, you old-fashioned granny. <laughs> Why, step outside, you spineless jellyfish, and I'll give you something old-fashioned right on the end of your snoot. Now, Dad. What a fine mess you've made of things while I'm gone, turning the house into a nightmare. And do you know when the weekend's over? And you, you practically ruined the business with your bottomly conveyors, bottomly automatic envelope openers, bottomly everything. I felt it my duty as general manager. Manager? Why, you're no longer even able to manage the postage stamps. Seems your fame is spreading, Matthew, my dear. And you, climb down off of that English accent. I'll get to you in a minute. Where were you when this was going on? I've resigned. Nobody resigns from me. I fire them. You. You weren't satisfied at getting your gadgets into my business, but you're trying to get this gadget into my house. I have all become slovenly and shiftless. And bye-bye, the machinery's gone out of whack. And then you'll wish you knew how to use your hands and your heads, you addle-brained bunch of button pushers. Come on, Bill, let's get some fresh air. Have you, Ricks? You sit down there and listen to me. I'll do nothing of the kind. Now you listen to me. You're all Mr. Bottomley said. Old-fashioned, behind the times, antiquated. Now see here, I... Silence. You've been saying, my business this and my business that. It may interest you to know it isn't your business. Not anymore. What? Uh, do you want to tell him, or shall I? Well, uh, I... Uh... Uh, we, that is, Mr. Bottomley and myself, bought of old Mr. Ford's interest. And that gives us 51% of the business. In other words, Cappy, we control it. And now can I ask what you intend to do with it? Oh, that's quite simple. We intend to merger with Bottomley Incorporated. Over my dead body, you will. Come on, Bill. I gotta go where there's peace and quiet. I gotta figure this mess out. You're gonna try to tell me you can't run my business nor my family anymore, huh? I don't have to tell you. Mrs. Peasley owns 51% of the business, and she'll go through with that merger just All as sure. blast, Mrs. Peasley. Well, that's your business. Now, what about your family? I'll fix them, too, every last one of them. How? You can't do anything with Matt. He's under his mother's thumb. And you can't keep Ellen from getting a divorce. And you try to tell Frankie what to do, and, well, you just try. Why, you pin-headed young swab. There ain't nothing the matter with Matt and them girls. They just got soft, that's all. It's, it's their surroundings. It's Mrs. Peasley. Right. She ain't altogether to blame, either. Bottomley's at the bottom of this. Bill Peck, I'll bet you $5,000 I can clean up this mess family and business inside of three months. And that goes for Mrs. Peasley, too. Well, what about it? It's a bet. We'll do it, Bill. We? Oh, now, wait a minute. You mean I've got to help you make me lose my bet? Oh, uh, well, you know already, huh? Well, I might have known it. Well, all right, all right. What's your plan? Listen, you young flounder. 
I can't take the business away from Mrs. Peasley. But I can take Mrs. Peasley away from the business before I lose it. Why, in a week's time, I'll have that old hen eaten out of my hand. And that'll be a break for Ellen, too. And as for Frankie, and that pussy will a son of a button pussy. Alfie, lend a hand with the luggage there. Seems like a dirty trick with the Electra all ready for our maiden voyage. I know, Waldo. But Kathy's going away on another long trip next Monday. And we simply have to humor him his last weekend with us. Here, darling, let me help you. Don't you, darling, me. I'm only doing this for Kathy. Next Monday, I'm going ahead with my plan. Ellen, how can you hold such a thought? Bye-bye, Waldo. Give your dear father my love and tell him I'll be back on Monday to sign the merger papers. Ellen, you're not really going... Next Monday, I'm flying to Reno. I'm sick and tired of you and your mother. Oh, stop arguing. Bad enough to spend two days on this old wash tub. The wash tub? The Gloria Ricks? Why, let me tell you, young lady, she's the finest, dirtiest sailing craft this side of... Paradise, I know. But wait until you see the Electra. Ah, uh, a toy for a child to play with in his bath. Well, let's not waste any more time. Tide's just about right. There's a fine sailing breeze right outside the breakwater. Breathe deep, Matt. You'll get over it. I'll never get over it. Not on this cruise, anyway. I still say you'll get over it. You! Now, don't worry. I don't like this any more than you do. One of Kathy's lesser ideas. Well, come on, get off the ropes. Off the ropes! Very graceful, my dear. But I must say, it looked pretty obvious. Looked real accidental to me. I can stand anything for two days. Go ahead, enjoy yourself. Maybe I shall. He's very attractive. Callous hands and all. You mean in invigorating, Mother? And the motion of the boat is really an exercise. Oh, I'm starving. When do we uh, chow? Or is it mess? Mess. Take the wheel. Think you can stand it? Huh? You'd like to pull ashore and call the bed off? No. I always knew I was not. I could go on sailing forever and ever. Lady, if you only knew. Good morning. Good morning. Tea soup out there, eh? Yes, miss, with noodles. Dear, please, let's be sensible. I don't think we'll ever get in. Are we in port yet? We'll be in dock in an hour. I can tell by the grounds where we're inside the Golden Gate. Thank heavens. I do hope the Potomies will be at the dock to meet us. Oh, Stuart, stop messing about like that and take these things out on the deck. It's kind of damp to dry outside, miss. You'd better wait until the sun comes out. Don't be idiotic, Stuart. Take the luggage, will you? I'll call the mate. Oh, that's right. Give the mating call. Go up on deck and see if you can find out when we get in. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Will you see that our bags are put up on deck, please? Why? Why does anyone want the luggage put out on deck? When a cruise is over, isn't it customary to have the luggage put on deck before docking? Oh, I see. You don't want to waste any time getting ashore. That's right. Well, how about an hour before we land? Uh, good enough? Will we be late? Your luggage will be on deck an hour before we land. When will that be? Well, to be conservative, I should say, with favorable trade winds and barring bad weather, we should be able to dock in uh, about uh, eight weeks. What? Eight weeks? What? Oh. Oh. Fog's melting fast. Looks like fine sailing up ahead. Yeah. Hope <laughs> too soon, I guess. Looks like a storm brewing. Where are we? 
Number five, this is an outrage. I demand that you turn back. Uh, still demanding, huh? Well, we're 400 miles offshore, and I'm not turning back. But you must. I don't want any more sailing. What about the Bottomleys? What about the merger? Bottomleys? The merger? That's your idea. Let me inform you, madam, you're not in my house now. You're aboard my ship, and I'm boss here. Oh, oh I'm going to have an attack of vertigo. Well, have it below deck. Did anyone ever tell you I was going to Reno today? Well, you got a long swim ahead of you. Now, Cappy, fun's fun, but no, I... I'm having it. <laughs> but, 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 but think of the Rick's Navigation Company. I am thinking of it. Did you think you could push a bottomly button and run my business? Why, if you had any sense, all of you, you'd see we're running short-handed on this trip. And that's for a purpose. I'm gonna work some of the bottomly push-button influence out of your system. First mate Peck here will assign you your job. Uh, Matt, regular crew, sail and deck. Ellen, cabin stewardess, Frankie, dining salon, and you, Mrs. Beasley, will be in charge of laundry and dishes. Suppose we refuse. That's mutiny. We use force to put that down. Force? <laughs> Don't forget, there's still passive resistance. You'll get no satisfaction out of me, you big bully. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, oh, oh, wait a minute, young lady. Take your hands off of me. I will if you promise not to jump. Ah, oh, now, oh. Captain Lanning. Nothing. Ah, uh, now, uh. oh, oh, wait a minute, young lady. Take your hands off me. Uh, 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 sharks down there, you know. Sharks up here, too. Take this first cut off of me. Not yet. I have a good mind to let you wear it for the rest of the trip like a necklace. But I tell you, Captain, he's not responsible. I'll give you $500 if you put that to port. Don't you see? Cappy's getting old. He's lost his mind. That's still mutiny. Captain Lennon, if anybody attempts to coerce the crew, you've got my orders thrown in iron. All right, sir. I'll have no more nonsense from you. Get your job. and imbeciles. I'll show them. You've been saying that for a month, and we've been doing the work of six men. It's just a waste of time. I tell you, Cappy, they're hopeless. All I've been giving them rope. Yeah, they've been stringing us up with it. Why don't you forget about it and give in? Cappy. Yes, sir. Everything ready? Yes, sir. Get going. You get your orders. Yes, sir. Give in? Why, I just got started. Why are we anchored so close to this frightful island? Those cannibals came out and murdered us. The island is uninhabited. That won't stop the cannibals. Mother, when an island is uninhabited, that includes cannibals, too. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> well, the cruise has been a failure. It's taken you eight weeks to find that out. I thought if we shook off civilization for a while, why, you might toughen up a bit and come to your senses. But you see, I was wrong. You can't change human nature. And it's taken you 60 years to find that out, too. I'm willing to learn. You can all relax. You win. I love you anyway, darling. Suppose you are a little slow on the upbeat. No one's perfect. When do we start home? In the morning. It's about time you came to what senses you have. I'm really great. It's all right, man. I smell smoke. No, 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 no. come on, darling. Come on. All right, shove off. Come on, Captain. Sure. Never mind about them. Why aren't they coming? We'll be all right if we can't put 
out the fire when you get off the tank. Be all right, darling. You are taking any chances, were you? in the other dory. It's only five miles offshore. But what will we do? Do the best we can. We'll find the highest point on the island and build a fire. Don't worry, we'll attract the attention of some passing ship. But this island is 300 miles off any ship lane. You said so yourself. I know it. Well, we might be marooned here forever. How are we going to live? Don't worry, we'll get along. Look! Food! We're safe! We're safe! Kathy, you're wonderful. I always believe in being prepared. What's the use in getting in the lifeboat and then starving to death? You mean we may be stuck here indefinitely? Just that? Just one big happy family. Happy? How deliciously thoughtful. Everything to stop housekeeping. Reminds me of when I was first married. What a memory. Oh, this heavenly... Braddock speaking. Daily report to CR. Steady breeze, 11 knots, 145 degrees, 13 minutes, 18 seconds north, 300 miles south by southeast of Hawaii. They'll be in port in less than a month. Well, you better tell the family. It's going to be much worse when they find out for themselves. They never will. How are you going to explain to Gloria Ricks? She's going to be dismantled. About a month, one of my ships will pick us up. Lanning will be aboard with the alibi. Gloria Ricks lost at sea. He and the steward picked up by a passing ship. That's simple enough. Yeah, but it doesn't help me. After the heroic way we abandoned the Gloria Ricks, how well do you suppose I stand in with Frankie? Well, what do you care? You're not in love with her. Who says I'm not? You said so a dozen times. Said she was useless. Be careful of this tropic atmosphere, my lad. It gets balmy down here. Uh, well, things won't be so balmy when I tell her the truth about the Gloria Ricks. Now, don't forget your promise, Bill. Oh, you got me all tied down with promises. I don't object, mind you, to doing my share of the work. But those two lazy monsters might help. Help? They expect you to be grateful to them. For what? Allowing us to breathe? We clean, cook, wash their clothes, and they live in luxury. While we sleep like monkeys in the trees. Well, there's no law against building yourself a house. And no time either. Poor Matt wants to. But work or starve, <laughs> well, that's their motto. That's Bill's motto. He's so masterful. There are you. Matt, say something. Hello. Poor Matthew. Are you exhausted? Yes, and I'm full of blisters, too. I have all the dirty work to do while Bill and Kathy go fishing. Why don't they build us a house? I'll do the fishing. You get seasick if you look at the water. Who elected Bill head of this outfit, anyway? Ellen. You're so obvious, my dear. You should talk. Bill Peck means nothing to me, no matter how many fish he catches. Why, if he were the last available man on Earth... He is, for you. <laughs> Poor Frankie, torn between the devil and the desert island. Now, my dear, don't let this temporary tragedy lead you into doing anything hasty. Just hold a strong thought on Waldo, and it'll come true. Don't weaken, my dear, just because Bill is so good-looking and masterful. I see. That's the reason you're warning me against him. Really? Frank? Well, I don't trust her. What's up, Leah? May I help? No, thanks. Uh, where's Ellen? Oh, she usually helps me. Hello, Frank. Can I help? I can manage. 
Uh, shall I hold the gourd? No, thanks. Ellen usually does that. Oh. Where did you learn that? The British West Indies? No, thanks. I've got a catcher. Hi there, Frankie. Remember, you're a long way from Reno. Dear. Fish and eggs and eggs and fish. You'd like caviar. That's eggs and fish in one. I'm just dying for some dessert for a change. Grape Suzette's, for instance. Oh! Oh! And what do you think you've got there, Mother? Dessert. Peaches, if you must know. What makes you so sure it isn't hash? I know peaches. They gurgle. Peaches don't gurgle, they swish. Well, there's only one way to find out. Here. Climbed up and tossed them down to Ellen. Yes, we had so much fun. I imagine. What's the matter with the eggs? I prefer the fish. The eggs taste too fishy. What do you expect seabirds' eggs to taste like? Milk and honey? I was merely voicing my preference. Is there any objections? Well, I think I'll hike up to the cliff and light the signal fire. Matt, did you chop plenty of wood? Yes, I worked this afternoon. You say I can stand to walk or go along with you? No, oh, thanks, I'll Matt. go with him. It's your turn to do the dishes. You can't get out of that. Well, I think I'll strike the hay, as the workmen say. I've got a surprise for you. You couldn't surprise me. Oh, I don't know about that. Wait till you see. I'm not interested. Here. Darling, you know I'm mad about you. I'd do anything for you. Anything. You would? Anything, darling. Then go punch your mother right on the nose. Ellen, how could you? What's bothering you, Frankie? Nothing. You look mighty unhappy to me. I'm not unhappy. Can't a girl have a little peace and quiet to think about things? Oh, sure. I didn't mean to butt in. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. But do you think there's any chance of us ever getting away from this place? We can hope. Now, Kathy, you can't hope yourself off of an island. Suppose we're stuck here for the rest of our lives. What then? I don't know. Well, I mean, of course, we've dropped most of the conventions of civilization, but... Do you miss it? Well, no, it isn't that, but... Well, there's some things that you just can't drop. Like what? Well... Well, how in the dickens can a girl get married in a place like this? <laughs> oh, funny. Frankie, she wants to get married. Married? Oh, yes. Fine thing. She and Bill. No, no. Congratulations. No, no. You can't rush into a thing like that. What is there to wait for? Oh, you've got to give it, give it some thought. You've you got to think about it. I've been doing nothing but thinking lately. Well, it's high time both she and Bill settle down. What does Bill say about it? Bill? Well, I haven't mentioned it to him. What are you doing up here? Well, you see, I've been thinking. Huh. Patient on road to recovery. Oh, Bill, 
May I talk seriously to you for a minute? I don't know. Can you? Oh, come on, sit down. Bill, suppose we're never rescued. Well, we will be. But even if we weren't, there's worse places in the world than this. Don't you ever think about getting home? Why oh, think about it? All right. Let's think about us, right here. Are you satisfied to do nothing but fish and steal eggs for the rest of your life? What else is there to do? Bill, we were engaged to be married once. Remember? Sure, and you... I know. It was all my fault. Remember the way you used to put your arms around me? That's the first thing I remember to forget. There. Like that. You know, you're coming up here every night and starting that fire is a joke. Why? Well, what makes you think that? Oh, we're way off the ship lane. We'll never be seen. Well, suppose, uh... All right. Let's wait the rest of our lives and suppose. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Making me propose? Frankie! Now, you let me tell you something, young lady. It was your fault we called it off in San Francisco. And if we ever get back there again, it's liable to be the same thing. Well, rather than that, let's forget about it. Because you love me? Yes. And there's another reason why we've got to wait. Nothing can be that important. Well, it is, though. Besides, we couldn't get married even if we wanted to. But we want to. We can. Breakfast smells good. Say, what are you celebrating? Mm. William, I don't know whether it's your cooking or my appetite, but every day I seem to be eating more and more. Well, you don't seem to short, Mrs. Beasley. Thank you, William. I was kind of late last night, weren't you? Uh-huh. Where's Frankie? Down the beach taking a swim? What's the occasion? Somebody having a birthday? Good morning. Let's eat. <laughs> That's all anybody seems to think about these days. Oh, I don't know about that. Now, what are you going to spring? Well, last night, Bill and I decided to become man and wife. What? You mean you... Why, it's scandalous. No, that's putting it mildly. It's impossible. Why is it? Why? Why, indeed? Do you mean to sit here and flaunt the conventions under our very noses? What conventions? Why, uh, it's immoral. That's all I've got to say. What's immoral about getting married? Married? Oh. But what about Waldo Bottomley, Jr.? Well, what about it? Now, there's no use arguing. We've decided. You mean you have? Well, I haven't. If you two callous brutes won't protect this helpless girl, I will with my last breath. Save your breath, Mrs. Peasley. We are going to be married. But there isn't a minister, not even a justice of the peace. Bill, you tell him. Cappy's a licensed sea captain. But he isn't at sea. Well, he's the only one who isn't. Yeah, this is far enough ship yours, my lad. Stand up. You can quit oh. walking the boat. <laughs> this marriage might sound informal, but that ain't gonna prevent it from sticking. It's gonna be awful legal. <laughs> it can't be any too legal for me. And that can wait till after ceremony. The wave knocked me off my balance. <laughs> Cappy's losing his sea legs. Cappy's losing his Cut sea legs. Cut that out legs. now we get down to business. Bad day for Cappy. He's also losing his daughter. <laughs> Are you sure you could do this without the book? Boy, I've tied dozens of them at sea in my time. I know the words by heart. <laughs> oh, God. Stop shaking. You'll upset the boat. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, warming up. Uh, yeah, it is, it is getting warm, man. Oh, Cappy, get going. Between the sun and the excitement, I'm afraid he'll faint. <laughs> aye, aye, mate. We are gathered here in this doorway today to join this happy couple in the holy bonds of matrimony. Uh, what's the matter with you? I know you've never tried anything like this before, but that's wrong, <laughs> That's That's right. I, uh, maybe we better talk. We can do that after marriage. 
do you, William Peck, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and provide for so long as you shall live? Uh, well, do you? Come on. Any minute now. What's the matter with you, Bill? Do you or don't you? No, yes, I do, but I... Well, it's all right so far, then. Uh, do you, Frankie, uh, uh... Francis. Oh, yeah, Francis. Uh, do you, Francis Ricks, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish, so long as you shall live? I... I do. That's what they all say. <laughs> Now, Abner and Ben well, will conclude the program. Suppose you've got a good old Bill Billy special. I guess you didn't know about this. We forgot to tell you. That isn't all you forgot to tell me. All right, come on, out with the group. Why, Francis, it was all in fun. Don't you, Francis, me. So, that's the reason you came fishing at the same hour every day. You were in touch with someone. Sort of. Captain Landing and the steward weren't lost. No. And it wasn't a real fire. No. Smoke pots and oily rags, but it wouldn't do any damage. So that's the reason you were so brave about it all. That's the reason you didn't mind being here while we were frightened to death. You were laughing at us. My hero. Well, Mr. Crusoe Jr., you were going through with the wedding. You kicked me. I didn't want to marry you in the first place. I told you so. You said you loved me. Well, I do love you, but I... You snake in the wood pile. When are we going to be picked up? In about two weeks. Wait until Mrs. Peasley hears about this. This is station NLHY San Francisco. We now bring you a half hour of dance music by Harry Brown and his singing swingsters. Give out, Harry. Mind you get them clean. You two have got a lot of dishwashing to make up for. Yeah, and a lot of wood chopping to do, too. Made something of a man out of him, the fool. Less talk, the more work you'll get done. Just wait. You wait until you get back to San Francisco. You two will be arrested at the dock. Not only did they kidnap us, they'll get life at least for that for trapping this poor girl into marriage. I wasn't married and I wasn't trapped. You'll rule the day you had this idea, Mr. Cathy Ricks. You pipe down now, you old salamander, and let me tell you something. When we came here two months ago, why you were as silly and spineless a crew as ever call themselves human. Why you couldn't even lace your shoes, let alone do a day's work. Well, now you can. You'll get back safe enough and you'll be all the better off for the experience. All but you. What I saw through is the one drive alive. Why, you're more alive now than you ever were, you old battle axe. How dare you talk to me like that? The way you treated me. The shame. The de de degeneration. <laughs> you mean degradation, Mother. Only you don't mean it. Cap is right. It's done us all a lot of good. And I, for one, am grateful. Why, well, Matthew. Now, just a minute. Let me finish. I mean every word I've said. And if you weren't so darn selfish and... Oh, oh my heart of... Oh, I'm going to faint. Well, go ahead and faint. Thanks, man. Oh, it was nothing at all. But every time I think of the way you made me chop that wood and carry it up that cliff. Oh, that was all in fun. Fun? I like that. I die laughing every time I think how close I came to marrying that baboon. Well, don't blame Bill. That was your idea, Frankie. Yes, but why? I thought, well... What else was there to do? We were really going to be stuck on this island. Oh, sure. Just using me as a last chance. Well, don't worry. You'll soon be back with Waldo, and you can renew your acquaintanceship with all the inmates of the nightclubs and traffic courts. We interrupt the program for a news flash. The doom of the Gloria Ricks, stout little yacht of the noted Alden P. Cappy Ricks, was read today in floating wreckage picked up from the storm-lashed waters of the Pacific. Last heard from when 900 miles west of San Francisco, the yacht with its eight humans aboard is believed to have gone down with all hands. The ship owner's guests on the tragic cruise were its two daughters, Ellen and Francis, Matthew Peasley and the latter's mother, Mrs. Amanda Peasley. All Pacific shipping continued on the lookout in the slim hope that some of the passengers and crew are still afloat in the lifeboat. Yeah, how did you guess? Ellen, you've been making a fool of yourself, and me too. And I've stood about all I'm going to. Stop it, you're hurting me. Come on, I've got something I want to show you. Suppose I refuse. Not a chance, my dear. 
And so I figured if we're going to have to be here together for the rest of our lives, we might as well make the best of it. We used to love each other, didn't we? Yes. That was before your mother... Now, let's not go into that again. Look, I built this all by myself. Resourceful, self-reliant, ingenuity. That's me. Why, that? It's not bad at all. Of course it's not. Step in and, and look around, will you? Now, this is why I took so long to chop firewood. I know it's nothing pretentious, but it's home, and this is where we're going to live from now on. Oh, Matt. And another thing, we're going to have a family. What? Oh, no. I'm not going to be tied down. Oh, just a minute. That's what you said in San Francisco. But it doesn't apply here. You no longer have any choice. You're crazy. Oh! All this work. Now I'll have to rebuild it. Never mind, darling. You'll have me to help you. Well, Cabby, looks like you've won your bet all right. But I'll probably have to pay you off in coconuts. How's that? Well, you set out to make your family self-reliant, didn't you? You've done more than that. Matt and Ellen are a pair of lovebirds, and uh, Frankie and Mrs. Peasley are getting along like a couple of campfire girls. Uh, say, Bill, uh, why don't you try reasoning with Frankie? Uh, she doesn't even know the meaning of the word. I guess you're right. I'm just a meddling old man. Where were you two last night? Home. Home? Yeah, home. I built it. Right over the hill. We invite you over sometime. Hey, how about my breakfast? I'm starving. I'm tired of waiting for my food. Yes, and I'm getting tired trying to please you people. Now, we're all in this thing, and the least you can do is try to make the best of it. He doesn't like our country. Why doesn't he go back where he came from? I can try. Hey, now, wait a minute. I knew somebody would go crazy before long. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. I'll get you people back to San Francisco. It's the last thing I ever do. What time does the next ferry boat leave? Never mind the wisecracks, Mrs. Waldo, Jr. Now, get this. We're about 300 miles off the ship lanes. Give me the dory with two weeks' provisions. I'll rig a sail out of that canvas, and I'll get help or else. Oh, Bill, that's suicide. The storm's about to start, and you wouldn't last five minutes if you got in one. I'll take a chance. I'll go with you. No, Matt, you mustn't. I'll go. I don't need any help. We'll take turns. At what? Uh, we've been here this long. We can wait a couple of months longer till the danger of typhoons is over. Then I'll take a chance. No, you won't. Since when have you been giving me orders? If Bill told you he had anything to do with getting into this mess, he's lying. Because whatever he did was done under my orders. He was against it from the start. And if anybody gets out of here, it's going to be me. Look! Look! The bottom is all right. We're safe. Babe, we're sunk. I do it just as well as anything. It's all in holding the right thought. Now the merger will go through just as if I'd never been away. It's so thoughtful of you to bring us clothing. I usually think of everything. I still don't understand how you found us. That was easy. Rick's men were picked up by a passing liner. They gave us directions when they arrived in San Francisco. So it took you eight weeks to get down here on the Gloria Rick, sir. Yes. You there, swabbing. Be more careful. You're not on a Rick's tugboat now, you know. Eight weeks, huh? Well, we make the trip home in three, the old and the new. What will science do next? Well, whatever it does, bottomly automatic products will handle it. I'm surprised you haven't an automatic deck washer. Hey, cook. What do you want? What time is it? Just as soon as it is. Four bells and all is well. Hey, what's that thing? A bottomly product, sir. Mechanical watchman. Someday somebody's going to press a button once too often around here. Yeah, I think you're right, Kevin. I'll have Bill Peck put away for 20 years. Nothing of the kind. Oh, 
You see, now that it's all over, Waldo, it doesn't seem half so bad. It does to me. What would have happened if I hadn't rescued you? Oh, let's not talk about it. It's certainly nice to have some real clothes again. Have you looked over everything I brought you? No, not yet. It's a wedding gown in the closet. A wedding gown? Why, what on earth would I want with... We were supposed to be married three weeks ago. Do you know that? Well, yes, but... Uh... Father's a licensed captain. We'll be married at sea. Swell idea. It's been tried before. What do you mean? Oh, uh, nothing. What's in there? Galley. Now look, Frankie. We're getting married. Oh, let's go in there and see. You know, I became quite a cook on the island. The galley slave's paradise. Not only electricity for cooking and freezing, but look at this. No looking for jars or having them spilled by a heavy sea. Just press a button, and there you are. Mm, happy to love that. Everything automatic, but uh, the potato peeler. Say, you wait till we get back into the port, and I'm going to do a little button pushing myself. Your button. You'll be in jail 24 hours after we dock. Why, you... Yeah, Bill, cut it out. You've got to let off steam. Push yourself a button. That's an idea. She don't want that lily-livered swarm. Just because he rescued her, she feels obligated. I'm going to put a stop to this, and I'm going to put a stop to that merger, too. Uh, now, you remember what you said on the island? What? That you were a meddling old fool who couldn't mind his own business? Did I say that? Sure did. Must have been talking in my sleep. <laughs> Bill, it's going to be three days before this storm blows over. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, you ever notice anything funny about this floating showcase? Yeah, it's got a lot of buttons. Right. Radio control, automatic steering, automatic compass, automatic everything. Hasn't been down the engine room? No. The whole shebang runs from one switch. Well, I don't know anything about all these gadgets. Well, neither do I, but I do know that old Bottomley can't sail it without it. What about the crew? Two men, the steam sailor and the steward. I've seen marriages under very strange circumstances, but never like this. Stop lurching, will you? I'm standing still. It's the boat. Oh, I think you're crazy to go through with this. You don't want to? Of course I do. Besides, where would I be if it weren't for Waldo? Safe on the island, in Bill Peck's arms. Not interested. Besides, I haven't seen him burning any bridges to stop me. Where are the bridges? Well, if he were resourceful, he'd do something about it. What do you want him to do? Stop the ship? Sure. Bottomly, push your button. I wonder where Walter Jr. is. He's getting spruced up in the center. 
found out what's the matter? Everything, sir. Our plant ain't real, magnetos jam. Unjammed. What I want to know is, are we going around in a circle? No, ma'am, we're just not going at all. Why? Our plant air accommodates all of the automatic instruments and the engine, sir. Forget about the instruments. What kind of a sailor are you, anyway? May I remind you, sir, that I'm not a sailor at all. Why are you on this ship? If you please, I'm an electrical physio research engineer. Oh. And you, how about you and that other fellow? Don't forget we've got sails. Yeah, but we're only seamen under power. And suppose we could sail. We couldn't get anywhere, we can't navigate. Especially when the instruments ain't working. And everything went out of commission at once? Why? I don't know. Well, I do. There aren't a dozen men left who can sail this boat home without navigating instruments. And one of them is on this boat. Cappy! Good old Cappy! Darling Cappy! I wouldn't ask him to help, but men are going to the bottom. Well, I will. Better not go out there, miss. I'd like to. Get it? You're going to take all those gadgets out of my house and leave it the way it was. And then, Mrs. Peasley, you're going to scram. Oh, yes, Captain. But where do I scram? I, Peru, Borneo, I don't care. And as for you, Bottomley, you're going to take all those automatic cargo loading gadgets and just hold that and give me my money back. But, Captain, best directs to you, buddy. How about it? Okay, but I think you're making a terrible mistake. The only mistake I'm making is not popping you one right on the end of your snoop. Still on the high seas. And 
Kathy has full authority? Oh, we did have. Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, but you can't be forgotten how the ceremony goes. I know the words by heart. Wait a minute. Hey, you! Button pusher! Get that swab in the corner there. Aye, aye, sir. Six bells and all is well. You're down to it. 